You can use Simulink buses to keep signals organized and to reduce the visual clutter that builds up in your model. Let's take a look at how you can get started using buses in Simulink. As your Simulink model grows in both size and complexity, you may start to find that the number of signals connected to different parts of your model starts to become difficult to read when editing. Or, you may have groups of signals with common sources and destinations that create a lot of traffic between certain parts of your model. Keeping your diagram clean and organized helps keep your model readable and understandable. Buses can be useful tools in reducing clutter and organizing based on common sources and destinations. To get started with Simulink buses, first identify what signals you want to put onto your bus. Ideally, we want to trace our signals back to a common starting or ending point to identify what should be grouped onto the same bus. To make a new bus, add a bus creator block and set the number of inputs to the number of signals you want to put on the bus. If you need to add additional signals to the bus, you can change the number of signals from the block dialog or use the smart editing features to add new signals directly from the Simulink canvas. By default, the name of the signal that is input to the bus is used to identify it elsewhere. So it's a good idea to name your signals with descriptive names to make identifying them easy later on. If you need multiple levels of signals organized into buses, you can nest buses inside of other buses to further organize the signals inside. Now you can cleanly route your bus to any part of your model that was using your signals. Once we update the diagram, we can tell our buses apart from our regular signals as they are drawn in a different style. To look inside the bus, you can use bus selector blocks. When you open the selectors dialog, you can choose what signals from the bus you want the block to output. For nested buses, you can directly access any element in a nested bus or output the entire nested bus. Keep in mind that bus selectors do not remove signals from the bus, so you can have multiple selectors output the same signal in different locations. If you're using buses at the boundary of subsystems or model references, you can also convert your bus creators to bus element ports using the action bar. Bus element ports offer a little more cleanliness and flexibility over bus creators and selectors. These ports further reduce diagram clutter by having multiple bus element ports connect to the same bus, removing the need to have a single origin point for all of your signals inside the subsystem. From outside your subsystem, the interface will still appear as a single bus port, but you can now use elements of the bus individually where they will be used in the subsystem. Now that we've cleaned up our model using Simulink buses, it is much easier to look at our model and understand where our data is going. Now you know the basics of creating and using buses in Simulink. To learn more about advanced Simulink bus concepts, such as the use of virtual and non-virtual buses, and the creation of bus objects, you can check out the documentation.